In this lecture, I will talk about the differences between IFRS and US GAAP from the perspective of level 1 candidate. Some high level remarks first. I first dealt with the level 1 curriculum in 2008 and at that point the main standard was US GAAP. In fact, in uh, FRA questions, it always used to say that the assumption is US GAAP unless stated otherwise. So IFRS was the other standard. Now over the years, the focus has shifted to IFRS. So in 2014, IFRS is clearly the primary standard and US GAAP is the other standard. And I have actually seen the curriculum evolve. My advice to candidates now based on the way the curriculum is structured is that you should focus on IFRS because that's the main standard and recognize that US GAAP is the other standard and understand IFRS and then just recognize the areas where US GAAP is different. On the exam, if you get confused and you can't remember whether there is a difference or if there is no difference, then assume there is no difference because by and large US GAAP and IFRS are converging and they are fairly similar. In the context of what we are doing, sometimes the wordings might be different, but the principle or objective behind both standards is similar enough. In this presentation, I'll give you a summary of what I think are the most important differences. It's not a complete laundry list. There are others who have come up with laundry lists, but I'm not a big fan of laundry lists. You can look for that long list if you want, but my contention is that from a testability perspective, the items that I will give you are the most important items. The remarks here are from the one of the readings in the first study session. So there is a reading on the various standards and there is a segment in there that deals with IFRS versus US GAAP. There again, most of that reading on standards focuses on IFRS. It gives an exhibit which gives you the minimum requirements under IFRS. There isn't a comparable exhibit for US GAAP. Then there is a discussion on IFRS and US GAAP convergence and the point there is that these two standards are moving towards convergence. So even though there is a movement towards convergence, there are still some differences that we need to be aware of. and. A lot of time is spent on the fact that analysts should be aware of the differences and when they compare companies they need to know where there is a difference between the two standards. And then interestingly there is an exhibit which summarizes the differences from 10 years ago. And then there is a note after that which says that some of these differences no longer apply and the relevant changes will be discussed in the reading. So, I then immediately discounted that because it doesn't make sense to look at the differences that existed 10 years ago. So they are not giving us the set of differences today, they are saying that we will talk about them in the subsequent readings. Now if you look at some laundry lists, you will see items that I think are now largely dated. So you will see something that says that if you have a situation that you need to account for and US GAAP and IFRS bo both don't give clear guidance on what to do. Then IFRS says that use the principle behind the IFRS framework and try to still apply IFRS, whereas US GAAP doesn't say anything. So that's one high level statement that you might see. Another point is that IFRS is the same for profit organizations and not for profit organizations, whereas US GAAP gives you different guidelines. Another comment says that IFRS is principle based, whereas US GAAP is rules based. So you see these items, but I think that this is not something that is overly testable. Now what I will do over the next few slides is take all the slides from my various lectures and then in bold I have shown you what US GAAP says. And by giving you the differences in a context in a relevant context rather than as a laundry list, I think it will help you remember things better. So criteria for revenue recognition. This slide shows the differences between IFRS and US GAAP, but in my opinion, 
other than the different words used, the principle is the same. So it is not really a huge difference. When you are selling something, as long as you have delivered the product and service, and you are reasonably sure of getting money, then you can book revenue. So that concept is delivered in different words, but the concept is the same. Under revenue recognition in special cases, here is a subtle difference. When dealing with long-term contracts, where the outcome cannot be reliably measured, IFRS says that revenue equals cost. So you can only recognize revenue to the extent of the cost incurred. US CAP here takes a more conservative approach and says that you can start recognizing revenue only after the project has been completed. Barter transactions and gross versus net reporting. Now here again, how to deal with barter transactions, how to account for them. IFRS and US GAAP say slightly different things. US GAAP is more conservative. While IFRS says fair value of revenue from similar non-barter transactions with unrelated party, US GAAP goes on to say that, look, you need to have proof that you have sold that same thing in the past. So US GAAP slightly more conservative. When dealing with non-recurring items and so on, the difference is that this category of extraordinary items that can be shown as non-operating, that concept exists in US CAP, it does not exist in IFRS. Next point, with property, plant and equipment and long-term assets in general. IFRS has the concept of a revaluation model, US CAP does not have the concept of a revaluation model. So US CAP just sticks with the cost model where we have the initial cost and then depreciation. With regards to investment property, this is an IFRS concept. US GAAP does not recognize investment property as a separate category. With intangible assets, again, with IFRS, we could use the revaluation model. US GAAP does not allow the revaluation model. So there is some truth to the fact that US GAAP is rules based because the moment we have revaluation, there is more subjectivity involved. And by and large, US CAP does not like subjectivity. All right, this is perhaps the most important slide. In the context of the cash flow statement, US GAAP for interest received, interest paid, and dividend received says that it must be operating. For dividend paid, it says financing. Whereas IFRS gives you flexibility. For interest received and dividend received, you can show it as operating or investing. For interest paid and dividend paid, you can show it as operating or financing. Last in, first out is only allowed under US GAAP. LIFO is not allowed under IFRS. Measurement of inventory value. So IFRS uses the NRV concept. So your first comparison is whether the item is being shown on the balance sheet at cost, whether that cost is higher or lower than NRV. If the cost on the balance sheet, so you need to show your item at lower of cost or NRV. I won't go into the details, but with US GAAP, you do lower of cost or market value. The difference is market value is replacement cost and NRV is the cost at which you can sell minus the selling cost. Accounting for long-lived assets. Now, here, when we do research and development costs, IFRS says that you expense research costs and you can capitalize development costs. US GAAP says that both research and development costs need to be expensed. And then when we talk about developing software for internal use, US GAAP says that you capitalize all the software development costs. IFRS says that as long as feasibility is not established, then you expense, after that you capitalize. With capitalization of interest, the subtle difference is that with IFRS interest on short term lending offsets capitalized cost, but that is not allowed in US GAAP. Component method of depreciation required under IFRS, not required and seldom used under 
US cap. Revaluation model not allowed under US cap. Investment property not recognized under US cap. So if some property is an investment property under US cap, you just use the regular cost model. This whole concept of valuation allowance is purely US cap concept. Valuation allowance is not used in IFRS. Reporting by lessor, we are talking about um, lease here obviously. This concept of a direct finance lease is only there in US cap. So what happens on in IFRS if the lease payment and carrying value are the same? We still use a sales type lease except that we say that there is no profit on the sale. All right, so that's it. In my opinion, those are the most important differences. And I think people worry more than is justified in terms of these differences. This used to be a much bigger problem in the past. Now it's not that bad. But always, if you practice lots of questions, you will automatically learn the difference.